Welcome back to Binary Jazz. Uh, a show about things. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to come out and say fuck 2020 right up front. <laughs> and that's where, that's where we're going to start, right there. Well, the good news is it's half over. Is it, though? Oh, not. I mean, almost. It, is it, though? Because, like, I don't know. Maybe it'll fucking last until, like, next February or next <laughs> August. Like, we don't know. Who the Have fuck knows? <laughs> Have you seen the meme where they're, like, looking and it's, like, 11.59 on December 31st and then it, like, clicks over, but it's, like... It just like eleven. Is they like eleven sixty. Yeah, it's like eleven sixty, and you're like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Here we are. This is me just like floating along, being like, gotta keep going. <sighs> I, like, here's the deal. It'll end at some point, and that's. Just the nature of the universe. Well, that's not helpful so, now. No, not at all. Not at all. And and hopefully when it does end, we'll have some time to like reflect before it ends. And it's not just like, oh, immediate. And then we're, it's over. Right. You know. I read something terrifying the other day about, oh, I can't remember what, the, what it was called. Unstable vacuum was the general concept that the universe is not actually a stable vacuum. Oh. So think of it like being in a valley and the bottom is the absolute bottom, but we're on like a lip. So if we were to fall, everything <laughs> would reorient itself and, and we, it would happen so quickly. 20, um, 20. Like the speed of occurrence. Well, it wouldn't matter. We wouldn't even know it was happening. We wouldn't even know. And we would just be Yeah. Gone. Yeah. So. Well, that's how you want it to happen, right? You want it to just be like the universe blinking and you're just done. Oh, what a, what a phrase. The universe blinking. Wow. The universe so blinking. That's what you keep me around for. <laughs> the universe blinking is my new post rock band. <laughs> yeah. I would buy an album just to put it on the wall with that name. Lots of <laughs> really blinking. lots of really long instrumental things with occasional samples of found audio from like uh like Sputnik. <laughs> yeah, that that but like that mixed in with like with like uh, protesters and like people uh, speaking at protests, but like the audio is really slowed down. Mm. That's that's my universe blinking debut album right there. I'm googling how often did Sputnik beep. <laughs> I, I just I rec I used Sputnik as an example because we watched um, October Skies the other night because my partner had never seen it. Oh, I haven't watched that in a while. Jake Gyllenhaal vehicle, <laughs> Laura Dern. It's good. <laughs> um, so I feel like I should say like what we do here. Sure. This is it. This is the thing. Sometimes there's a topic and we make a hat tip effort to talk about the topic we know nothing about, but generally we just bullshit for the duration and uh, uh, sometimes incidentally stumble into the topic. More often than not, we acknowledge that the topic has been stated and we don't know what it is <laughs> at least as of late that's been the standard who knows that's uh, because there's 2020s so much... full of surprises maybe today yeah. we'll spend the entire episode talking about the topic you might know this maybe the universe will blink i don't i didn't know what it meant i had seen yeah. it before but i had to look it up so okay when that happens that goes it goes on the list of binary jazz topics <laughs> i had something like that come up too in the last week but then i forgot what it was so I almost had a topic, but now I don't. That Ooh, Chris, also you want something happens, crazy? That... Something mm -hmm. crazy. Before the topic is announced, yes. maybe we should guess as to what it is. No. Kind of <laughs> dinosaur. Okay, and the topic is? <laughs> Wait, what did you guess? Kind of a dinosaur. Kind of dinosaur. Oh. I feel like I'm I just... would know that one. Uh, Do you think I'm just over here reading about dinosaurs without knowing types of dinosaurs? <laughs> The Utahraptor um, is a uh, type of dinosaur. It's related, I believe, to the Allosaurus, and uh, it was discovered in Utah. Gas Actually, no, it's not. It's not. It's not related to the Allosaurus. Allosaurus was discovered in Utah. That's a different dinosaur. Utahraptor is, I think, like a um, 
I can't remember what a Utah Raptor is, but anyway, it was discovered by a kid. It was it was, na- it was it was like named by a kid. It was named by like a sixth grader or something. Yeah, famously found in Toronto. So that's weird. No, <laughs> it was only found the Utah. champions. Yes. I was thinking the kid's name was Utah. I know. Okay. It was found, I believe, in um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Escalante, uh, Grand Staircase Escalante, which is a national monument that mm. uh, was part of the land Tear it down. that oh, yeah sorry. part of the land that was awarded that was made into a national mon- monument by Obama mm. that was then uh, pulled back by Donald Trump God fuck that guy yeah, yeah. I got a letter I feel from like him that's an area oh got a letter is, from that, him? is that not yeah. fantastic yeah I'm on a mailing list too two weeks two weeks oh, after I got my um I guess COVID oh. stipend. They were like, yeah. "Hey, just to let you know, you're gonna get a COVID stipend." And I was like, yeah. "This was this would have been useful to a company with the actual money I got." Yeah, did yeah, I, get, I got um, that. I got that like a week after I had gotten. The, <laughs> did you get a physical check or did you get like a uh, like a debit card? I got oh, a like an deposit. actual check. Okay, I got a yeah. Deposit. Well, this is great. This is a this is a wonderful example at how efficient this entire program happened. Chris, direct deposit. Allison, print a check. I got a debit card that I could only withdraw like X amount of dollars per day. Really? So I had to do it over the course of like two weeks to get all of the money out into an actual account I could use. Yep. That's so weird. I didn't even know did that you, was an option. I know you, like oh, I, I didn't got, either. Like I don't have direct deposit as an option because I don't have a US bank account. So sure. like the yeah. check made sense. Um, yeah. But... Wow. I actually do I have didn't... a U.S. bank account, but uh, apparently it was not just apparently not acceptable. broken, Gary. <laughs> apparently, my outspokenness has been. Uh, yeah. I said something yeah. about this... it. Oh man, I don't. I don't want to get into it. What's the topic today? <laughs> it's this podcast. The uh, topic for today is anodyne. Anodyne. A n o d y n e. It's a treatment of metal, right? To give it color, like aluminum. Oh, that's anodizing. No, I don't know what anodyne is. Never mind. I was like, if it is, that's not on my research. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, this is, this is how it works. Like you say things confidently. I was like, wow. A lizard just jumped from one chair to this, like a chair to the screen. It's probably a four foot gap. That was impressive. Little lizard. (laughs) He's doing it just for your respect. (laughs) It's like, enjoy the porch, buddy. Um, Oh, he sees a, oh. Dang, I'm gonna see A N O D Y N E. Can you actually mm-hmm. see the lizard? No, not at all. No, because oh, I, wait, no, I can't now that he's moving. No, up in front of me. Yeah. He's he's got his eyes on a bug. Episode. We might get to see some natural So wait, are there windows or are you just on a porch? I'm on a porch. Okay. Porch. It's not a sunroom. That would be no. ridiculous. No. Okay. Uh I don't know if that'd be ridiculous. Uh because the neighbors, two houses down of a sunroom, which I don't know, maybe it is a little ridiculous. I have to apologize for the dog barking. My neighbors have trained their dog to bark, to, bark. to be let back in to the house, but then they do not do anything about it. Uh, it's interesting you should say that because I don't know that I've ever apologized for the dog barking. So I retroactively <laughs> apologize for <laughs> dog barking and squeaky doors and all the other fantastic noises that accompany my presence everywhere I go, it seems. Um, <laughs> Oh, now I could hear. It. I was going to say, I actually didn't hear the dog, but now look at this yeah. lizard, like up on the screen. Let's see. Do you see it? No. I uh, see nothing. I see, uh, I see a spot on the wall. Is that your lizard? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's like a four inch thing with a tail, and I'm, I have the laptop, I don't know, eight, <laughs> six feet away. So, yeah, I'm surprised that it doesn't come through very well. Anodyne. Anodyne. Right? But dine is is uh, what you do at dinner uh, is um, dine is like a measure like a, a mechanical measurement thing, right? Is that how we like sure four dines? Yes. yes, yes, and yes, and it's yes, more. and uh, it's also uh, refers to uh, property value. Yeah, it's kind of like. If you have, you know, four dines of something, yeah. it's like handfuls. So it's just like you got a lot. It's more <laughs> colloquial. <laughs> it's like stone. 
like you know, I weigh four stone or whatever. I don't remember how much is a stone. It's like twenty pounds or something. I don't know. I have no idea. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I, th- I thought I thought, st- I thought it was like something obscure, like thirteen or something. It, it's hard probably, to in your head. I mean, it's British. Seventeen and three eighths. I mean, which, like, which yeah. funny? Which funny is when I, I, when I, say I learned that. about when I learned about stone, like it being like the existence of that as a measurement, uh, was in when I was in England, and yeah, it makes no sense to me. But they use. I mean, they people use it like mm-hmm. it's it's a thing it's like i mean I, as as obscure and stupid as as like 12 inches as a foot is like stone is obscure and stupid and it's totally like a valid measurement even though it makes no sense whatsoever is is it it, it does make sense it's as it's as completely as arbitrary as it's, it's, a, pound it's or a kilogram yeah, yeah exactly um so to that end do people use it like in facetious sarcastic ways like like oh i ate a stone of fish and chips for lunch or is that or is that like not a thing like i would but i i don't I, know i don't really think so i'll have to ask my uh, only for my serious friend. matters well like like i don't feel like grams is something that's used you know sarcastically i feel like it's a scientific measurement and so people don't use grams sarcastically i don't know if you're using you're saying like if you're if you're particular enough to be using grams and in, in the united states that you're just like you have no sense of humor. <laughs> I don't know that that's what I was trying to say. Uh, you were you're right, Gary. A stone is fourteen pounds. That's easier than thirteen and three eighths or whatever I said. Um, uh, so, but that's... but not by a lot. Katie has taken to when we take our walks after lunch. Yeah, okay. uh, asking me to give her word problems for math. So so you so you could ask her how many stones is she? Uh, I could. And then I could also, we, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, the fallout of that is that when I was uh, putting tile down in the bathroom, uh, we were talking about geometry and square feet. And I gave her some measurements and I realized, oh, that's probably more difficult than she can handle, like based on what she knows. So then I gave her like a simpler number. Uh, but then I got the simpler number stuck in my head and then I bought that amount of tile, which was oh, like no. only half of what I needed. <laughs> so <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> and of course, like it was all curbside pickup. You know, so as soon as I realized I did it, I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I got home with the first load, and I'm getting it out, and I'm thinking, I'm like, how did I miss? And then I, I started thinking through, I'm like, oh, because I simplified it to make it easier for her. Damn. Um, so then I started to order more tile, and when I started to order more tile, I placed the order and then realized, oh, you know what? If I'm going to order more tile, I'm going to need more of the mud that goes down underneath it to adhere it to the floor, Ugh. right? So that was a second order. Well, I get an email that the tile is ready, and I hop in the car to go, and I uh, – I'm like, I'm waiting and I like every red light I'm checking to see like, well, is the mud going to be ready? Like, this is going to be silly if I have to go, like come back tomorrow. And by the time I got out to the place, they were already closed for the day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an absolute comedy of error. It was fantastic. Fantastic. My neighbor is going a lot in case you couldn't hear. Wait a minute. Do you live in the kind of area that you can just wave to people? Apparently. Well, I mean, he's riding by in a mower. I thought that would be rude not to. <laughs> There's there's only yeah. one there's only one yeah. person I ever wa- waved to uh, mm-hmm. in my neighborhood, and it's the bro who uh, used to live bro. across the street from us who never wears a shirt. Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah, I mean yeah. like I remember you telling about. Him. Yeah, yeah, he's the only because he's the only one that actually like waves to us, and so like I feel obliged to like you know do that hey. and yeah, yeah, and he still uh, doesn't wear a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like I drive by like... and he's still not wearing a shirt and like now he's got new neighbors to talk to and and they can also experience his his not shirt wearing but they will miss out on uh the federal marshals who uh raided his house storming <laughs> yeah wow i the first apartment ron and i lived in we had a neighbor downstairs we called the shirtless wonder he was from new york and always wore like 80s shorts which are about half as long as shorts should be um Oof. and no shirt and just stood on his porch and smoked cigarettes all day. I don't know what scam he was running, but no, he he wears shorts that are, um, I would say, modern length, which is to say, like men's shorts that like at least hit the knee, if not are longer, which you know makes you doubt why they should be called shorts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, he like I don't know if they're cargo shorts, but there's some sort of long sort of shorts, and he yeah, those are part of his uniform. Well, yeah, lucky you. Our, our shirtless neighbor was like the short shorts. Yeah, men really resist the idea of a capri. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why was that never fat? I mean, I I I owned a pair of capris in high school. 
Um, why was that never really kicked as fashionable though? Weird. Did you ever? Did you ever uh, like roll up the your the cuffs of your of your pants? In like, oh hell yeah! In like fourth grade. Uh, much later than fourth grade. Uh, in fact, I had a pair of pants recently that I put on and I rolled them up and Rhonda's like, what are you doing? I don't know, I haven't rolled my pants in a while. She's like, there's a reason for that. <laughs> oh. okay. It's good to have right. these outer voices that keep us in check when we're like, why haven't I done this in a bit? And then there's like, this is why. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is it looks really weird. Oh, yeah. all right. Oh, that's kind of comfortable. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I got rid of like a bunch of t-shirts. Yeah, we've been in this house for, at least we avoid the topic. Uh, I've been in this house for like, more than a decade. So I've like, you know, as you like get t-shirts, they just get bad at the stack and you don't wear them often. And you're like, oh, this is a good shirt for doing housework and laying tile or driving to the tile store to not get tile or whatever, you know? And um, and so I got rid of like a bunch of shirts. Like, oh, I don't care about these shirts. But then I was like, oh, any shirt that I have like some kind of emotional, like, oh, this would be a nice shirt to keep because it reminds me of my first word camp or, you know, reminds me of blah, blah, blah. So I finished that and I'm like, damn, I still have way too many shirts. Mm. So now I've sort of been like delaying doing something about them. But I think, I think tonight might be the night. I'm going to go in there and say thank you to the shirts that I don't need to keep. And it's either that or you yeah. turn them into something like a quilt. You know, I thought if, about that. If you're crafty, but if you're actually not going to do it, then just say goodbye. <laughs> There's someone in the WordPress world that does that. Yep, yep. It's uh, Andrea someone. can't remember her last name. I should uh, contact her. I can't remember her last name because her Twitter handle is now Andrea Quilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she like opened... Is she's... it Middleton? Yeah, maybe. maybe she stopped up. WordPressing and opened a quilt shop. Cool. I will probably contact her I today wish I and say, hey, I'd like to send you a bunch of shirts to make a quilt out of. I feel like... I say a bunch... Like... I feel like not WordPress and it might be my burnout kicking in. I don't know. She, she'll be like, I'm going to need like nine shirts. I'm like, well, I have three. Maybe you can use the back. <laughs> <laughs> also, perhaps I should watch this one before I send it in. I, I do not have the, the shirt for my first WordCamp. I don't think. Um, Mine was WordCamp Tampa in 2015, maybe? Mine 2016. was WordCamp word Utah. In 2008, before uh, before they made it a requirement that work camps had to be city names, <laughs> and that was only the second, I believe, word camp Utah. So silly, that kind of stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, and now and now they're sort of walking that back anyway. I don't know. Word WordPress is stupid. Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it behind when I move. I don't think I'm going to get involved in local meetup. Anodyne. Anodyne. Uh, anodyne. It has to do with air, airplanes, right? I feel, I, I, I can't get this, like, anodizing thing out of my head. So, <laughs> it's... It, well, what's it's, the thing that you're thinking of? What does that do? What did you call it? An anodized metal. So, like, you take aluminum and you put it in an anodizing solution with a dye color, and you electrically charge it, and then aluminum picks up the color. So, like, you remember I'm trying to think, like, what it would be? Anytime you bought like an like something that has like aluminum that's like purple or blue or red, like that's anodized. And so, it's, like, just so, so the anodyne is the substance that you dip the aluminum or whatever into. And then electrically charge. I think that, maybe, and that's why it's called anodizing because you put it in the anodyne. Yeah, I think maybe anno, the prefix means um, year. So the process takes a year. Uh, why so I think pricey? It has something to do with. Um, dang, I really feel like I should be able to like parse this out from the word. I don't that think it works. Will. I always feel like I can, and it never works. <laughs> I hate to be the naysayer in the group, but like I would never have been able to parse this out from the word. Oh no, that's fine. We need a naysayer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness my natural qualities are valued. <laughs> Someone has to be a realist. Someone has to be the naysayer. 
It's interesting. I said that someone has to be a realist, which means in my mind that I feel like naysaying is like the most real thing, right? Yeah. Which I don't believe at all. I feel like. Well, I used to so. tell that to people that I wasn't a pessimist. I was a realist. That was like my. Yeah. My comeback for them being like, "You're too negative." <laughs> I don't know where I, I stand th- now. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like I feel like because Aaron falls into that category too, uh, and. The problem with being a realist is it sounds pessimistic a lot of the time. Yeah. Not that it necessarily is, but like when you're thinking like like a lot of one of the things that she does is <laughs> like uh think about like like two or three steps ahead and or worst case scenarios, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. and when you're doing that, then of course it sounds like you're a pessimist when really you're just preparing yourself for the or the possibility or likelihood that something like that could happen yeah. in order to be like ready for it, not to be shocked and like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? Now yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. And um, then when your worst case scenarios actually manifest, you're, you're valid. Not exci- for, you're not excited yeah. about no, it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It doesn't sound like a, it isn't not a victory. It's like, yep. Yeah, saw that like coming. A, oh, yeah. of course that's how it worked. Yeah. I do see a lizard <laughs> crawling up your thing. <laughs> what is that? Is that screen? Is that glass? It's screen. It's screen. So you can just like yeah, they, they don't have like suction cup toes. Up. Like they have like little, I guess they're tiny fingernails. Like they can't climb glass. Little anodynes. It, like, a little tiny anodynes. Little lizard anodynes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it really a cute word like that? Mm-hmm. Here's the one I was trying to show you earlier. You see that one? The tree? Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, like a jump. When that when it gets really warm out later on, um, that lizard will turn like green like a tree. Like, well, how do you get any work done? I would just be staring at lizards all day. I mean, I don't really get a lot of work done if we're being honest these days. <laughs> really distracted with the move thing and stressed out the general state of 2020 as we discussed earlier. So, I mean, I, I, I. I I'm assuming no one I know or work with is listening to this, but I, I will start a ticket and then I don't care at this point. No, when they, so by the time they hear it, I'll be moved and be back in a better headspace and be more functional. Um, but I'll start a ticket and I'll, I'll like block like an hour to work on a ticket. 25 minutes later, I'll be like, all I did was put it on my calendar that I'm working on it for an hour and I've done nothing for 25 minutes. I haven't even thought about it. Like I've been like just swimming in this mess in my brain. And so I don't, I sort of, I don't clock that time. I just come back around and I, um, I, uh, I clock like a half hour to it, which is realistically what I work on. But that means at the end of the week that my hours are sort of low, but I'm getting the stuff done that needs to be done. And I'm communicating that, hey, I'm not very effective right now. And I will be in July, I promise. Uh, and I do believe that I will be in July, but. Um, I yeah, envy but your I confidence. Suck right now. What's that? Yeah. I envy your confidence. I mean, I, I will be back to um, like, pre-house selling productivity. Like I don't yeah. have a bunch of shit to fix up. I'm not freaking out about like, oh, how are we gonna sign this paperwork without getting like a, a, a deadly disease? Like, you know, I mean, there's like the little things that are a little- the little things, <laughs> yeah. That are just a little hard to parse these days. Like I, as we're talking, my realtor sent me a message and, said, and was asking me if I knew um, if we will, like we have the option, we can pay a mobile notary to come and do it at our house. But I'm also like, well, that seems just as dangerous i mean maybe not as yeah. dangerous i don't know like i don't know this person's been to other people's houses and so all of our house and carry this disease or i can go to like a law firm and sit in a conference room and bring my own sanitizing wipes and wear my gloves and mask and i don't know i mean it's 150 bucks less but i you know who knows also this is why i take 25 minutes to get started on <laughs> <a> task. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'll be productive in July. Yeah, and then I mean, I, I'm, I'm I officially like out. I'm, I'm officially out until uh, July third. It's been like I, I sort of put more time on the calendar, and and it was approved uh, to take care of Erin now because uh, she nice. broke her knee. Um, happy How are you doing? Fucking twenty twenty news. Oh, it's fucking great. That's why I yeah. keep dropping the f bomb. It's fucking yeah. great. Uh, um yeah and i don't I mean, know what i'm gonna i don't know what july is gonna be like i, I said i probably like 
because she'll be in like physical therapy and shit like i don't i mean i i it'll probably be have to be like part-time anyway yeah um, have you um has your family found like a new rhythm because i mean I, like i'm sure things change with her yeah in this household yeah um yeah. we've sort of figured something out basically it means camping out in, in our bedroom all day um and then at like three ish the kids go off to do shit on the computer and then i work on dinner and i have like a spreadsheet where i have like uh like logging all of the various medications that she's taking because there's like so much shit yeah um oh. and we wanted to be careful with them because one of them is is oxycodone which is an opioid um yeah so we didn't want to you know didn't want to fuck that up um uh yeah so so some of them have to be like antibiotic and stuff right ending soon uh surgery like don't get an infection and one of them is uh, a blood thinner uh hmm. and that's a injection she needs to give herself and she's got i think like eight left and they are twice a day um and then there's like a stool softener that we're not really using and then there's there's a a Tylenol, which is ironically um, less strong than the Tylenol that I have in the bathroom that we got from Costco. <laughs> um, and then one of them is Oxy. And then one of them was something else that we're not using. Oh, it was an anti-nausea thing because uh, one of the drugs I gave her in the hospital made her super sick. Um, so that's yeah. another one that we're not using. But we're also like supplementing that with like ibuprofen to sort of like eat use extra painkillers to like start cutting yeah. back the oxy uh dosage so she hasn't been doing oxy during the day for the last few days um and last night was the first night that she only did one dose of oxy um so that's sort of what i did after mine i like tapered and like yeah, but nobody told us that like and we were getting close to the end of her the end of her bottle and we're like we're not gonna have enough to even get you through the night and so um, she asked for more and they gave her more, even though it says no refills on it. And they're like super snotty. Well, not the, the pharmacist wasn't super snotty, but the insurance said, we're not going to pay for more like a refill on this. Yeah. Um, which is fine because there's only like 30 bucks. I was expecting it to be like 150 or something. Yeah. And like, I, and I was realizing like, like, okay, so it does, it would require some amount of like, um, of like uh research but like all i needed to, all i needed to pick up a prescription for her was well i, I guess I, I did need an id because i did ask for my id but when i went in the first time all they asked me was for was um was her birthday and like if i had found out her birthday um and yeah. came in and knew that she was on that prescription i could get heavy like opiates for 30 bucks like yeah yeah that's that seems uh but they did ask for my ID, so maybe they would have asked my, for my ID yesterday, too, or the day before. Um, anyway, I'm doing just peachy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm... I'm glad you took the time off. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that seemed, like, uh, not optional. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm going to try to work on getting into a, a better headspace we bought uh we bought journals um yesterday that will arrive tomorrow and and we talked about like journaling just to get all this shit out of my head and and into the world somehow um yeah do you like making collages is that ever a thing you do that was a thing i did in like high school <laughs> <laughs> i find it really calming to just be like i'm just choosing images and gluing them with a glue stick i don't know why anyway <laughs> and then you look back on them and like wow what the fuck was going on in my head <laughs> yeah, basically i'm like why were those images appealing to me what is wrong with me <laughs> why was that my vision board <laughs> i think though i think there's a i think Oh God, I've been listening to to do. Uh, never mind. I've been lost in the sea of like mindfulness and quantum physics, and I I've been trying mindfulness to and universe. quantum physics. That's that's a doozy. Yeah, that's that's well, they relate because things like quantum entanglement, and I mean, there's there's shit happening that like we scientifically can kind of observe and say there's something there. I don't know what it is, and there's like my reality and your i don't i don't 
This could be like 17 hours of Gary Vanderbilt. <laughs> Is this I, like I, when my partner mentions that we're in a simulation? <laughs> well, well, so I, uh, I had I had a deep dive on that uh, a couple nights ago and convinced myself that we're not. And I'm struggling now to figure out a concise way to present why I'm convinced we're not in a simulation. Um, Are you sure I you like taking notes. I picture you like sitting your family down in like a living room and being like, I have a presentation. I want you all to pay attention for the next 15 minutes. Here's the way it works. Like I, I kind of get my PowerPoint. Like, you know, so obviously like I have my, my hour long ticket at work. And instead of working on that, I space out for 25 minutes. 10 of that might turn into like this existential dread of like what defines Gary is, well, you know, in Jacksonville, these things I'm involved in and these people that I know and who I am and what I'm surrounded by and proximity to this and that. And I start thinking about who is Gary in North Carolina. Mm. Uh, and there's, uh, there's two, there's, there's the excitement of like, I can be any Gary I want. Right. Um, and there's the fear of like, I can be any Gary I want. And um, like, don't fuck it up. Like, you know, like that's the, that's the thing. So it's both a gift and uh and uh, and it's it's absolutely frightening, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can appreciate both parts of it. Um, That's interesting uh, because, like, I can definitely relate to the fact that, like, when I lived in the Bay Area, Bay Area Chris was a different Chris than like when I was in college, Chris, and college Chris was also a different person than like Utah Chris, like, yeah. And and I sort of see it as like an opportunity to say, um, like set aside the things that are not clearly things that I define as good. You know, there are things that are mostly good, or like like I can I can start very simply and not be involved in anything locally. And, and focus on just being present with my family and figuring out what that looks like, you know, in a new place. And, and you know, that'll lead somewhere or it won't. And when I feel like, you know, that's, that's stable and I've had enough, then I can start, you know, figuring out what it is in that area that, that speaks to me. But, uh, but then the fear that comes with that is like, what it, you know, there's, I'm not a super social person but i definitely have been able to tell during isolation you know that that i miss the camaraderie of uh you know in-person group stuff so um so am i going to let myself fall into like a, a depressive state as i you know try and refactor these other things so there i mean that's anyway that's why i'm reading about quantum physics obviously obviously as you do as uh, you do well we have we're past the time where we need a topic uh, or the need a, the, the answer to the topic. Uh, we, oh, we Anodyne. Dodged uh, very well uh, talking about the topic. What is Anodyne? Uh, it can be two things, but mainly it's a drug that allays pain or alleviates okay. pain. Okay. So the anodyne properties of certain drugs. So, All right. But it can also be used to be like not likely to offend or arouse tensions or like be controversial or like so like a like conversation music. like a conversation can be anodyne killer. certain music oh. can be anodyne really non provoke like non provoking so 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 it's a it's a painkiller of all types it's a painkiller yeah. <laughs> for actual pain but it's also a painkiller to like avoid confrontation avoid any <laughs> sort of conflict or like conversely like oh that whatever that song was very not anodyne for the situation or whatever it is i don't know yeah anyway my sister um went like i don't know i think we do we no we haven't met in a couple weeks i think when we last chatted jacksonville was like trying to land the republican national convention yeah and um, then you did yes so that's a thing and my yeah. sister sent me a message and it's like hey can i come stay with you that week like absolutely. no well, no, she's in she's in Jacksonville. She's coming to North Carolina. Oh, okay. She'll be leaving town. She'll Sorry, be I leaving town. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's why she'll be coming to visit because she right because she doesn't want, want to be in town. Yeah. Oh, okay. Flip plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, in my head I was already there, but yeah, yeah. So it'll be it'll be the end of August, and so we'll be gone, and so she will. Uh, 
for a while, which I'm pretty excited about. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that uh, I think a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, I talked about uh, the the protest against uh, COVID restrictions concert that wasn't going to happen because it was moved. So it got so it got moved, and then uh, the update to that story was it got moved again or got canceled again. They were gonna uh, the the judge in that county filed a restraining order uh, to prevent them from ha- holding the event. So then they moved it again to like uh, Cedar City, which is where we have uh, the Utah Shakespeare Festival. And Cedar City was like, yes, we're happy to have this thing. Uh, And it happened. Yeah, it definitely happened. There's lots of people there. There's like a couple thousand, I think. And then hardly any of them had masks and it was great. And it's great. And numbers in Utah are going up and it's been fucking fantastic because 2020 is awesome. Jacksonville is sort of weird because in an effort to land the RNC, of course, restrictions were reduced so that they can have a maskless convention. Oh, and so restaurants have opened with social distancing in effect. And you can imagine how well that works at a bar on the weekends. And so today being Thursday, this past weekend, there was like rumblings about like, oh, someone with COVID was at this bar at the beach. Yeah. And, uh, and since then, there have probably been a dozen restaurants that have uh, announced that, oh, we had staff that tested positive, so we closed until further notice. Um, or restaurants that are closed for deep cleaning, though we haven't had anyone test positive. We have. So... Uh... We had a couple meat packing plants that uh, wow. that tested positive, like with a like mini outbreaks. Yeah. And while Rhonda was gone last weekend, oh, I don't know if yeah, she took like she had to take a like, last minute trip to North Carolina last week, and so I only had Charlotte, the youngest, with me, and I'm like, I'm not gonna cook for Charlotte and I. So I of course did some uh, Grubhub or whichever app had the, the cheapest discount or whatever. And uh, one of the restaurants I ordered from was the beach. So I'm going, oh, good. Like, I mean, it's probably fine. It probably is. Probably is. They're still open. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, food probably doesn't have stuff. Probably, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's in someone's car. Yeah, you know, but then somebody's people, touching it you know? and they're doing all the stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was careful. I mean, I brought it in the house and then washed my hands. And like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, but still, you, you can't get that thought out of your head. You right. You have to be like, yeah. oh, it's no, fine. we've. We've been doing that for a while, but you know, uh, since Aaron was uh, checked into the hospital, she is negative for COVID. So that's a thing. Someone told me that like they basically like put a swab in your nose and like scratch the back of your brain. Is that how she described it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that sounds fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's something I definitely want to sign up for. Yeah. Oh. My mom is uh, getting her knee replaced this week, and she had to do a pre a COVID test and she was just like wish me luck and I was like mom you've had kids like this will be fine and she was just like no <laughs> like, she, was like, she was like that was not pleasant <laughs> so she's getting a knee replacement like I know the answer but I have to ask is there by any chance like bionic well she already got her hip replaced so, okay. so she's already she's, part robot she's getting there yeah. um but I mean, like, is it just like a, a passive, like, mechanical device, or are yeah. there like electronics and stuff? No. Okay, I knew the answer. I just had to ask. I was hopeful. I was hoping I your mean, mom was going to be like. Not that I know of, but like, would she tell me if?